We are honored to be joined one, by one of our colleagues in public media. Uh, Stephen Williams is president and CEO of the great WBGO 88.3 and also on the internet. You can find it all around the world. Mr. Williams, how are you? I'm well, thank you, sir. How about yourself? Doing great, doing great. We're taping on the 16th of February. This will be seen later. Let me ask you this. For those of you who do not know what WBGO is and why it matters so much, give a uh, brief description, please. Well, WBGO is, is the flagship jazz radio station in the, uh, in the, uh, along the uh, Eastern Seaboard. And, and for many people, the flagship jazz radio station around the world. We've uh, been broadcasting uh, uh, to the, uh, the New York City metro area since 1979. And uh, shortly thereafter, obviously, we uh, went uh, live on the internet. And uh, so we've been broadcasting to uh, uh, the entire world uh, since uh, the uh, 1980s. You know, as we take this program a year or so into the pandemic and we've seen beyond that, the biggest challenge is you and your colleagues, you took over, by the way, on January 4th, 2021. You've been connected to the station before that. You understand programming better than most with your uh, background. Biggest challenges the station faces as it relates to COVID? Well, uh, the biggest challenge was trying to figure out how we were going to keep our uh, staff safe and out of harm's way. And I think we met that challenge head on. Uh, and here we are a year later uh, in a, uh, a work from home situation for not just all of our announcers, but for all of the, uh, for the, all of the uh, WBGO staff. We decided, uh, Steve, in late March that uh, because the COVID had been escalating uh, to uh, just disastrous proportions, here in the New York City area and uh, you know, around the world, really, uh, that the most important thing uh, for us was to figure out a way to move uh, all of our announcers into a remote, a remote working situation that would allow them to work from home or from anywhere else. Uh, and again, like I said, stay out of uh, harm's way uh, uh, due to the, uh, the escalating nature of COVID-19 uh, more than a year ago. And here we are. Uh, a year later and broadcasting uh, as we have been uh, in a remote fashion uh, and barely perceptible. Uh, many of our listeners don't even realize that all of our announcers uh, are working from home because the transition has been virtually seamless. You know, the other thing is, by the way, let me just close that one-on-one uh, -on -one airs on Saturday mornings at 6 a.m. on WBGO. There's so many folks tell us they you know, that's the program where the conversation matters most. You don't need to see it per se. And that's why it's such a powerful uh, medium or platform to be on. So check us out, 6 a.m. on Saturdays, one-on-one. -on -one. Let me ask you this, from a fundraising point of view, you know, we're, we're working to keep our team safe as well, but we also have to keep our doors open even though we gave up our office. Um, meaning, no money, no mission. Fundraising, talk about it. Well, you know, the, the fundraising happens uh, for a public radio station in a variety of ways. Certainly there, uh, there's the individual donor, the, the person who gives their $10, $15, $20 a month uh, when we ask for uh, that donation. Uh, and then there, of course, are uh, uh, business support models for us that include underwriting announcements. And then there's uh, the major gift uh, model that, uh, that incorporates corporate gifts and uh, donations uh, from well-heeled fans of the radio station, uh, you know, over uh, $5,000 and more. Uh, and so the, we, we were hit hardest, Steve, uh, in the area of underwriting because, you know, uh, as, a, as a jazz radio station, as a music radio station, we rely heavily on uh, the support of the jazz ecosystem, you know, performances, uh, concerts, uh, uh, most of the things that we rely upon were uh, completely devastated by uh, COVID-19. Uh, the, the jazz ecosystem uh, relies heavily on presentation and, and performance. And uh, of course, there was none of that happening. Right. Not a, very little of that has happened over the last year. So uh, because we derive a, much of our revenue from those sources, uh, we were hit pretty hard. We, we've managed to stay afloat. In fact, uh, the last... Uh, the last quarter uh, of uh, we're right now in our, our you know twenty uh, fiscal year twenty one 
Uh, our last quarter was actually one of our best, just as uh, we entered into the new year. Uh, so uh, the uh, the community, the community of business supporters, and of course listeners have rallied to support WBGO in what is a, a very tough time. And it's not just WBGO, right? I mean, it's public media. It's, it's public media in general. All did, did, Steve, all I'm sorry for interrupting. Tell folks why you believe. Listen again for those. Who know we're affiliated with public broadcasting, WNET, um, the public television station in New Jersey, et cetera. We know that public broadcasting, public media is important. For those who may not appreciate us, some call us the enemy of the people, not public media, media overall. We have no horse in any race. The WBGO Journal, Doug, Dor nobody, we're not rooting for anyone. We're trying to provide valuable, important information, incredibly. Uh, important music, uh, uh, America, great original American uh, art form, great American art form, jazz, et cetera. Why is public media so important now more than ever, Steve? Well, uh, now more than ever, uh, the public relies upon the information and the entertainment, the solace, if you will, that public media organizations provide, uh, as only public media organizations can provide. And this also relates to why it was important for us to stay on the air uh, and, and and keep our uh, normal programming operations intact, right? Because we realized that the public relies upon us, especially in difficult times. And I think about uh, uh, the reliance that the public had on WBGO in the aftermath of 9-11. And this is, similar. this is a very similar situation in terms of, of the public need uh, to be informed, uh, to be uh, uh, comforted, uh, How about to, to be, be calmed and comforted, to calmed yeah, right? Down, right, right. To, to, to know that there is something that's going to be on the other side uh, of a very difficult set of circumstances. So public media provides not only that connection to your community and the uh, the uh, the calm or solace that that uh, music stations like WBGO provides, uh, but also uh, there's. Uh, you have to have some sort of some sense of normalcy when things are so <laughs> and so desperately That's abnormal. Right. You need to have some sort of touch uh, to uh, uh, to that semblance of normalcy, and I think that that's that's uh, one of the things that we provided and can provide uh, so well, so unique uh, 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 in terms of what we can do as public media organizations. Well. Uh, Steve, Stephen Williams is the president and CEO of a great uh, American institution, a great media uh, iconic institution, uh, WBGO, and I could say 88.3 on, on the dial, but also check out their website. And Lauren, let's make sure that the website's been up. We'll do it in post-production. Um, you know, I wanted to add, if I could add just one real more. Real quick, few seconds left, go ahead. Real quick, you know, in, in, in a time where there's so much divisiveness and, and so much fractured uh, uh, relationships, so many fractured relationships. WBGO and jazz as as an institution, as an art form, is the great unifier. Uh, you, you have to look at it like this, Steve. Jazz relates and, and appeals to all walks of life. You know, you're young, you're old, you're black, you're white, you're male, female, or whatever your gender specification is. You're rich, you're poor, you're educated, you're not necessarily educated. Uh, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, right? You live in the United States or you live in Africa or you live in Europe. It, it doesn't matter. Jazz is the great unifier. Everyone comes together um, uh, because of their love for this art form. And that's, again, one of the most important things uh, about WBGO's existence at this time, this really uh, important time in, in, our, in our lives. Glad you shared that, Steve. Thank you so much. We're honored to be colleagues in public media with you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Northward Center. NJM Insurance Group, the New Jersey Education Association, the Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, Inc., Georgian Court University, and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by NJBiz. 
NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? They're the men and women who teach our children, the public sector employees who maintain our infrastructure, the workers who craft our manufactured goods, and New Jersey's next generation of leaders, the people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered.